Okay. Um, I play Spider Spawning, which puts a one two green spider creature token for each monster in my graveyard, which is six. Yeah. Well, I play Rolling Tremlor. It deals two damage to each creature without flying. Bye bye spiders. Aww. Those spiders are toast. I have no respect less for your dumb spiders. Aw, oh, come on, man. They were just like minding their own business, eating bugs and stuff. I mean, you don't want bugs in your house. They're like gross. Bugs are dumb too. Oh, uh. Oh, geez. Look at the time. I gotta get going for uh, plot convenience. Well, okay. Well, uh, see you later then. So much needed sleep. <sighs> Wait, why did I go to sleep with my clothes on? Creatures on a Nintendo Wii was one of those games that I saw on a shelf but never got around to buying. It wasn't until later that I picked it up second hand that I decided to give it a try. Just a brief warning before we go any further, if you have arachnophobia or you know someone with arachnophobia, please plug your eyes and cover your ears now. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and like. The premise is simple. You play as a tarantula and a scorpion and wander around a desert environment surviving the deadliest critters that this harsh sandy wasteland has to offer. And that was enough for me to become intrigued by this game. Honestly, I can't really think of that many games where you're a little more than a bug to your enemies. I don't know what to say. No, that's a game company that treats its player and subsidiaries like bugs. Come on, think. Right off the bat with the menu, there's creepy crawlies scurrying in the background. So let's jump right on. Okay, last chance to leave if you want to. No? All right, let's go! The game starts off with a narration from Billy Bob Thornton. Yes, he's in this game playing one of the two human characters. The other one played by none other than the late Dennis Hopper. That's actually pretty cool. There's even interviews with both of them that you can unlock in the extra section of the menu. So Billy Bob Thornton talks about Spanish gold or something, I don't really know, I wasn't really listening to what he was saying, but to me, he sounds a bit too much like Sam Elliott. They can rot in that hospital for all I care. He got what's coming to him. You hear it too, don't you? And now all I can think about is Billy Bob Thornton and a reboot of The Big Lebowski. It could work, right? But then, Scorpion! We have a Scorpion, people! Oh, and there's Mr. Tarantula jumping out of him, trying to kill him. I mean, snuggles and hugs, not killing. Yeah. So these are actually our playable characters in the game. Turns out we start off with the Tarantula first. After a brief time figuring out the main controls and consuming the juice from bugs... Yummy! We are able to proceed and start exploring our desert abode. And this is where I think the main strength of the game lies, the atmosphere. The developers nailed the atmosphere. When you're above ground, the desert is bright, the terrain looks authentic, and it feels like you're actually in the desert. It's nice. And when you're underground, it's dark and gloomy, but it's not so bad that you get lost a lot, thankfully. Normally, I don't like really dark areas, but the darkness actually complements just how creepy and spooky the bug holes are. Oh, and there's enemies that ambush you in the darkness, and it really puts you on edge. But what exactly is your main goal, you might ask? Well, the game gives you little objectives like go to a place or escape from a place, but the overall sitch is for the tarantula to track the scorpion, and the scorpion is tracking the tarantula, which is kind of cool when you think about it. The only comparable game I could think of for this is Halo 2, where you're switching between Master Chief and the Arbiter, but they weren't actively trying to kill each other. Just look at these two! 
And these fighting scenes are pretty well animated. At first, you're controlling the spider, but when you're weaken the scorpion enough, a cutscene occurs with the scorpion scurrying away, and that's the end of the chapter. And thus ends chapter one. Tune in next week where we'll cover chapter two. Oh, I can't say no to an unruly mob. Okay then, chapter two. Whatever chapter two is called. So now it's time to play as a scorpion. He plays radically different to the tarantula, which is a very welcome change. As you might expect, the scorpion moves slower and has more powerful attacks, whereas the tarantula is agile, can jump and even shoot webs at opponents, but can take hits as well. There are other differences, like the tarantula can grapple to special webs in order to traverse levels, and the scorpion can dig through cracked walls, snip through weeds, and, oh my god, conduct impressive finishing moves on larger enemies? I don't even think I need to say what this is paying homage to. I bet everyone can already hear. Get over here! That is amazing! I never get tired of seeing these finishing moves. They are so gruesome and awesome, though it's only different for each type of enemy. So if you kill, say, a rat over and over again, it's the same each time. It also uses quick time events in order to finish the moves, which is reminiscent of Star Wars The Force Unleashed, but at least there's not a heavy penalty if you don't get the timing right. Most times you could just start again because the enemy is already weakened sufficiently, so that's nice. Then again, there are a few times where you're stuck in these webs and you need a string of quick time events in order to struggle yourself free, and if you mess up here, well... And here, these actions are mixed up each time, so you have to pay attention to which directions are shown. I got caught off guard a few times because it is, but with some focus, I got through. Just a brawl with so many black widows. So many black widows. So many spiders. Too many spiders. Get them off. Get them off. Yeah, these little bastards also poison you, so that's great. At least when you die, there's usually a save point not too far back that you start from. It's like the developers knew to put a save point in front of the hardest parts of the level so that you don't have to replay most of the level again. What a novel concept! I'm looking at you, Aiden Chronicles. So let's go over some of the enemies you'll encounter. There's a variety of spiders, such as wolf spiders, which usually attack in groups ranging from 2 to, like, 20. Tarantulas, which often have a partner, and they can be very tough. And black widows, as we've already seen. There's also scorpions, of course. They aren't too tough, but like the tarantulas, they're usually in a pair. Then there's beetles. There's basic beetles that love blocking, range beetles that spit gunk at you, and mortar beetles! Are they actually on loan from starship troopers? Anyway, there's also rats, geckos, horny toes, tarantula wasps, and brain mantises. Each of these enemies have a different fighting style and need to be taken out carefully, especially the wasps, seeing as they're the only flying enemies in the game. Oh, and there's also mites that swarm over you and drain your health until you shake them off. There's also some boss battles like this rattlesnake in the first level and a Gila monster later on. In these, the object is to survive rather than kill these guys because it's nearly inconceivable that a tarantula and scorpion could actually defeat one of these in real life. The fighting is pretty good also. It utilizes motion controls very similar to Zelda Twilight Princess or Skyward Sword with basic movements to do basic attacks, but allows for different movements for other more advanced attacks, which are fairly accurate despite the Wii's sometimes flimsy motion detection. The worst part is when you have to aim your web or aim a jump attack, and trying to do this while in combat is near impossible. So after some arduous battles, you'll need to recover some health. There's usually plenty of crickets, scrub worms, and pill bugs, which aren't actually bugs, to eat and restore your health. The grub worms also unlock bonuses like concept art and the aforementioned interviews if you collect enough of them. And there's also special crickets that will increase your health bar if you eat them, which is very necessary for later on in the game. But is that all you do in this game? Is there any real story? That's where the human characters come in. As I said before, there's Dennis Hopper and Billy Bob Thornton, and it turns out they are searching for buried treasure. Your role is mostly being near them while they do it. You don't actively interact with them, but it's kind of cool to hear their muffled voices while they dig or move around as you travel through the level. 
you'll end up crawling on all sorts of things, moving closer and closer. Things on, like a bike, a rusted out truck, an arcade cabinet, and various other things, because it turns out these guys live in like a junkyard or something. But then, murder! Yeah. Seriously, Dennis Hopper kills Billy Bob Thorne after they find Sorry, a treasure. Buddy. And hey, you even get to crawl on his leg! Neat! So, what does that mean to you? Well, as a spider and or scorpion, probably nothing. But as a human gamer controlling a virtual spider and scorpion, REVENGE! Making your way towards the house where Dennis Hopper lives has lots of enemies because, as I said before, it's a junkyard, and lots of critters can hide everywhere. So using all the skills we learned, such as this amazing jump attack, we get to the point where Dennis Hopper captures us as a tarantula. Hey, little darling. <laughs> that... That takes guts. Just reaching out at a tarantula that is poised to bite the hell out of the fleshy bits of his very exposed hand, all while calling it darling? Amazing. Move over, Chuck Norris. We got a badass coming through. And then the scorpion apparently was right up on the treasure when it was found, where they give you a nice fake-out boss Gila monster again that gets killed by Billy Bob Thornton. Then he gets murdered again, but this time from the scorpion's viewpoint. And this is really when I realize that the missions are running concurrently. Shut up! It wasn't that obvious. Just like how it wasn't that obvious to me in Gex 3D that... That was Nikki from Pandemonium! And that's that missing point checked off. But what about the tarantula? What's become of him? Apparently, Dennis Hopper likes to keep lots of critters in cages and does God knows what with them. Ah, oh, now there's a beauty. Come on out of there, you! Also, this room looks like the inside of the cabin in Evil Dead. After escaping a tank, that damn rattlesnake from the first chapter knocks over his tank and causes all the shelves to collapse. Should've gone with Ikea. So now we're wandering around this guy's house with everything let loose, and I have to say, this place is nasty. But at least I helped out Dennis Hopper by killing every bug and spider I could find. Then I climbed up and escaped through the deer's mouth. Let's see you laugh with a tarantula in your mouth! <laughs> And now that the tarantula is free from Dennis Hopper's evil clutches, we can finally escape to... Oh no! Not the snake! Again! This battle starts off similarly to the first time you face it, but there's fire this time! Oh, and some Jedi moves in order to finish it all off. The tarantula escapes, and now it's the scorpion's turn for fun. Mr. Scorpion manages to make it inside Dennis Hopper's house and finds... Dennis Hopper, no big surprise, with a shotgun! That's a big surprise! So what's the best option here? What would you do in this situation? I think I know. Climb up his pants and crawl inside to sting him square in the dick. Ah! Oh, and then he gets bitten by a Gila monster. Those are venomous, you know. Ooh. But it's okay. He did kill Billy Bob Thornton, though. And Koopa can't get away with killing Santa. Yeah, cut that joke out. After emulating Shadow of the Colossus a few times and dodging shotgun blasts, you escape out a hole in the door, and Dennis Hopper chases after you and shoots the gas pump where you had the rattlesnake battle as a tarantula and explodes himself. And then the tarantula and scorpion ride off together into the sunset. Erm, um, flame set. So that's Deadly Creatures, and I've got to say that I was delightfully surprised with this one. I know that I made a lot of different video game comparisons in this review, but that doesn't detract from the game at all. The developers seem to take some of the best parts from other games in order to make Deadly Creatures better. I mean, other than the motion control aiming, but what can you really do about that, right? And the atmosphere and environment is really what ties the whole game together. I'm still really impressed with how they made everything as interactive as they did. So if you're interested in playing a decent experience-driven game, this is a good game to try out. Even if you do have arachnophobia, the game kind of lets you get exposed to creepy crawlies without having to touch them, and that's pretty cool, and in a way, therapeutic. But the main thing to take away from all this is that killer spiders and scorpions don't exist. And you can trust me, because I live in Alaska, so I know what I'm talking about. 
And even if there were, I wouldn't be scared of any. <gasps> hey guys, as always, thanks for watching my video. Special thanks goes to Jesse Alvarez for helping me out on this one. And if you'd like to see more content, go ahead and click on other videos I made. And if you'd like to, you could leave a comment or a like. And if you really want to, you go ahead and subscribe. I would really appreciate it.